Statistics and Excel. Height, statistical inference, data, Excel, practice, problem. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. So you can just open a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can focus on the heart of the practice problem, blank tab only having the data so we can practice formatting the cells in Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to see where we are headed, noting that we have the data on the left-hand side related to heights in inches pretty long data set that we will be working with we are imagining that this is the complete population of our data we'll take some stats on it like the average and the median we'll make a histogram from the entire data set and then we'll take samples of that data set so we kind of already know the answer of the entire population we are looking at and now we want to think about how close samples will get us to be able to make an inference about what the actual numbers are in the data set. All right, let's get into it. Let's get stuck in by going to the blank tab, noting that if you don't have uh, some of the data sets, then you could try pulling data sets to practice with from Coggle, K-A-G-G-L-E dot com. It's a good resource in my opinion. So we have our information on the left-hand side. Let's first sort our entire worksheet, which is what I do typically every time, noting that the data set is basically has multiple decimals. So we have a question of how many decimals out do we want to take the data as we reference our cells? I'm going to scroll in a bit, and then I'm going to select the entire sheet, putting my cursor on the triangle, right-clicking on the sheet, and let's format the cells. I usually go to currency, negative numbers, bracketed, and red, dollar sign gone, and I'll keep the two decimals, which will actually lower the amount of decimals. So re remember, the data sets are a little bit longer than two but I think that will work for us. Two decimals, there we have it. I'm also, before I unhighlight, go into the Home tab, Font Group. Let's make the whole thing bold as well. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I, I would like to put this into a table, but I also wanna be able to kind of randomly mix up this data set. So remember the goal here is to think of this as the entire data set, and then we're gonna imagine that we're going to be taking samples from that so let's first just get an idea of the entire data set itself so i'm going to put a table into this go into the to the home tab i'm sorry insert tab and then the tables group let's make a table out of it so that should select the entire data set because there's no missing cells in here this is a pretty extensively long data set whole lot of numbers if here if i go down to the bottom of this thing we're down to you know 25,000 numbers in it so let's was that right it's uh yeah so let's go ahead and say okay now we've got a table within it i could then sort the data i can see it from lowest to highest or uh highest to lowest uh in inches so if you want to convert this clearly to feet then you know you'd have to do a conversion divided by 12 and so on to get uh, to feet, but the general idea is there it is. Now, if I imagine this as my entire data set, then I would use our calculations we saw before. I can make a histogram of this and I can do my calculations of the average and the median and so on. Let's, let's first make a skinny B here. I'm gonna put my cursor in B and put it in between and make it skinny. And let's do our normal statistical calculations. Let's take the average or mean, and I can use my average function to do that, equals the average brackets, and I'm gonna put my cursor on the drop down and select the entire data. Boom, there's that. This one, by the way, I might wanna make this a little bit thinner, and notice I, it, I might wanna wrap the text up top. So home tab, alignment, wrapping the text, and then maybe I'll put a space, I double click in here, put a space so that it puts the space there. I might wanna center it, home tab, alignment and center. Okay, so there's the average 
then we might take something like the median using my trusty median function we've seen in the past. I'm gonna do this fairly quick. Median, double clicking on this and selecting the whole data set. That's picking the one in the middle. We might want the max. So let's do that one equals the max. These are my standard, give me the top value. And then we might want the min. Give me the bottom value equals the min. We can also take the quartiles, but I'll stop here. There's the min value. All right, I'm gonna make this blue and bordered, which is my typical kind of formatting for the data input areas. Home tab, font group, drop down on the bucket. If you don't have this blue, I find that by going to the more colors. You can use a different blue, by the way, but I like to use this blue right there. It's a nice, pleasant blue. And then I'm gonna put some brackets around it, home tab, font group, drop down, borders. We want all borders. So there are our borders. Now we can take this and enter a histogram from it, selecting the entire data set. And we're gonna to go to the insert and then charts and drop down on the histogram. I'm just gonna insert the histogram, boom. And it just does it for us. And we get this nice bell-shaped kind of looking histogram. Now, when we're looking at different sets of data, we're not always gonna get you know, a shape that looks like this, but certain sets of data, many sets of data will. So when we're talking about natural things oftentimes, and we're trying to measure the midpoint and how dispersed things are from it, such as height, such as weight, and those kind of things, then oftentimes we do get like a distribution like this and we'll leave and then we'll get into remember that if i see a distribution where i can think of you know a curve related to it that could be useful if i can come up with a function of the curve because then you have a mathematical calculation of it we'll talk about that later uh but for right now the idea all we want to do is say is get the idea well this is the entire population we are imagining this is the entire population so now let's imagine that from this population of data, this entire population, we take samples of it. Let's imagine that we could not get the entire population, but rather could only get samples and see how close those samples will get us to the actual number. Now, clearly in real life, we wouldn't have the entire population. We wouldn't know the real number, that's the point. But obviously, if we can test a situation where we know the actual number, these are the actual numbers of the entire population, and then we can do our inference testing, taking a sample, and then see how close it gets us to the average, then we're testing the process that we can then possibly use in other situations where we don't know the answer to the entire population, but we can use our statistical tools to, to try to get an idea of where the middle might be and how confident we could be of it. All right, so what I'm gonna do then is I'd, I'd like to be able to scramble this data so that I can come up with like